Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at the impacts of hearing loss in the classroom. Hi, I'm Heather Hall, the Kentucky School for the Deaf Outreach Consultant, Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative Area. Our learning objectives today are that you will understand what a hearing loss sounds like, you will learn about how hearing aids and FM systems work, You'll understand the impact of hearing loss on the educational process, and you'll understand how you help students with hearing losses in your classroom. We're now going to watch a video that demonstrates hearing loss. See if it gives you a better understanding of what it's like to live with a hearing loss on a daily basis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha! Uh -huh. You're on my apartment building on Granite Avenue. You owe me 300 bucks. Get it up. Fred, take it easy. It's only a game. Wilma, I'm just like them big tycoons. I play to win. Now, Barney, pay up or get out of the game. Put the That's one down and two to go. Betty, it's your turn. I don't have any more money either. You got it all. Then I'll take the mortgage on your open home. Well, come on, take the dice, will you? Don't just sit there like a dummy. I will not have you talking that way to our girls. Come on, Barney. I think we'd better go home. Another way to think about a hearing loss is looking at it how it would look visually. On the next slide, we're going to get the opportunity to show a visual reputation of hearing loss. Text below simulates a mild hearing loss. Read it carefully and be prepared to answer questions about it. Now that we've read it, what was the story about? Was it easy to figure out? Do you truly understand what the passage was talking about? Probably not. It's very difficult to understand something you've read when you only have bits and pieces. Did you notice that there were certain sounds that were dropped? Missing letters and missing sounds? Even with a small hearing loss, it can be very difficult to decipher what you hear just because you're missing sounds here and there. Even when somebody is fitted with a hearing aid and the fit is rather good, they can still miss out on sounds and they won't hear much better even with a hearing aid than what you were looking at before. Keep that in mind. Hearing aids don't fix the hearing loss. It just gives them a better chance of catching in sounds that are presented to them. Through both types of hearing loss simulation, how difficult do you think it would be to try to learn vocabulary? Kids with hearing loss often struggle and have limited vocabulary. It would be very difficult to learn something if you can't hear it correctly. So keep that in mind, your classroom. All right, let's think about how we heard things in the two simulations. What impact do you think that would have on the pace of learning things? Students with hearing loss require multiple exposures and lots of practice and repetition when it comes to learning words and meanings. Keep that in mind in your classroom. Now that you understand the difficulty of hearing things said in the classroom, would you want to volunteer and answer a question, especially if you're terrified that you might have not completely understood the question and gave a wrong one. Keep that in mind in your classroom. These kids are very reluctant to do so. 
And then on that vein, the thought also, how long and how much time would you devote to trying to pay attention? A lot of our kids fatigue quickly and give up because trying to figure out things takes so much time and effort. We're going to further understand hearing loss by attempting to take a spelling test. It's going to simulate a kid sitting in your classroom with a hearing loss. You're going to get three cracks at doing the spelling test. We're going to start off with a pretty good hearing loss and move our way to a lesser and lesser hearing loss. So you get three tries. So you need a piece of paper with three columns. So I'm going to give you time to go ahead and get that ready. Let's complete your understanding of hearing loss by having you take a simple spelling test. It's so easy, you'll have three chances to spell each word. Make three columns on a piece of paper, number from 1 to 10. For each test, use a different column. You may want to pause our presentation at this point and begin it again when you're ready. The first time through, we will mechanically simulate a severe, high-frequency hearing loss. The second time through, a moderate, high-frequency loss. And the third time through, a mild, high-frequency loss. Each time through, the words should become clearer. Word number one. Word number two. Pear. Word number three. Dollar. Word number four. Mark. Word number five. Word number six. Keep. Word number seven. Van. Word number eight. Cape. Word number nine. Word number 10. Need. How many of the 10 words did you get? Well, here's a second chance. This time, we'll simulate a moderate, high-frequency hearing loss. Word number 1. Bath. Word number 2. Pear. Word number three. Dollar. Word number four. Mark. Word number five. Learn. Word number six. Keep. Word number seven. Van. Word number eight. Cape. Word number nine. Hedge. Word number ten. Need. You should have gotten more words this time. You could probably hear and understand more. Here's the last test, a simulation of a mild, 
high frequency hearing loss. Word number one. Mm. Word number two. Mm. Word number three. Sour. Word number four. Mouth. Word number five. Learn. Word number six. Sweet. Word number seven. Vine. Word number eight. Poop. Word number nine. Hedge. Word number ten. Mood. Did you find taking the test was frustrating? At some point, did you put down your pen and say, I don't get it, I'm just not going to try? When you look at these words, they're not terribly difficult words, and they're pretty common. But because of the hearing loss, it makes it difficult to decipher what's being said. So these are what kids struggle with in the classroom when they're given oral directions or even a spelling test. So keep that in mind when you're in the classroom. This also emphasizes the importance of wearing an FM system, which we'll discuss later, to make sure the kid has the best chance of hearing what's being said during assessments like this. While the spelling test is still on or fresh on our mind, let's take a look at these questions, read them over, and answer them, and see if they give you even more insight for what it's like to be a kid in a classroom with a hearing loss. Now let's tackle the big question. Do hearing aids fix a hearing loss? The answer may surprise you. No, hearing aids do not fix hearing loss. It simply increases the chance that a sound will be heard, but hearing does not equal understanding. So just simply putting on hearing aids do not restore hearing loss to normal. It's a common misconception. Here's an important question. Does hearing equal understanding? The answer is no. Hearing does not equal understanding. Just because you recognize a sound or noise doesn't mean that you fully understand what that noise or sound means. And I hear a lot of times teachers said, well, they answered to their name when I called them. Just because you answer to one word does not mean that if multiple words are strung together that you're going to clearly understand the meaning. And keep in mind, we're trained from birth to listen for and recognize our own names when we're called. We almost certainly must keep in mind that distance impacts understanding speech as well. The further that we get away from a child's hearing aid, the more garbled the sound is. Hearing aids are only effective to about three feet, and every distance from that makes them less effective. When we did the spelling test earlier, I mentioned something about the use of an FM system. We're going to watch a video to demonstrate the difference of just listening through a hearing aid and listening through a hearing aid with an FM system attached to it. So let's watch this video to get a good understanding of the difference. We 
in quiet and in noise, and then to listen through a personal FM system. This is what speech sounds like when it is recorded through the microphone of the hearing aid. I am now at the optimal listening condition of about three feet away from the microphone of the hearing aid, and there is no noise in the background. For the hard of hearing student in the regular classroom, this ideal listening condition rarely exists. The first condition we would like to demonstrate shows what happens when the teacher walks further than three feet away from the hearing aid. I'm going to walk approximately 10 feet away, and as I do, you will notice that the loudness and the intelligibility of my speech decreases. Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, her lamb was sure to go. And here, at 10 feet away from the hearing aid, you should notice that you have a very difficult listening situation for the hard of hearing student in the regular classroom. As I walk back towards the hearing aid now, you'll notice that there's an increase in the loudness and the intelligibility of my speech until I am once again back at the optimal listening condition of about three feet and you should hear everything with little difficulty. What we would now like to show you is what happens when noise is added to the factor of listening through a hearing aid. To demonstrate the interaction between distance and noise, we will use the following noise sources. A teacher working in the back of the room with some students. This will simulate what could happen in the regular classroom. We will also turn on a fan to simulate the noisy blower fans that many classrooms have. As the noise sources start, I will again walk 10 feet away from the hearing aid, and you should notice that we have an extremely difficult listening condition. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. Jack, jump high. Jack, jump low. Jack, jump forward and hurry and slow. Since we rarely 
After watching that video, can you see the difference between using it and not using the FM system with a student? It makes a huge difference and helps them cut out all the background noise around them, which makes it more difficult for a kid with a hearing loss to listen and hear. Can you see the true value of using it in your classroom? The difference is huge, and it's going to ensure that student has access to the instruction going around it. And again, it's not about you talking loud but being clear, that's the difference. No matter how loud something is, if it's not clear, then it doesn't make a difference. Many times, a teacher can feel overwhelmed when they know they have a student with a hearing loss in their class, and they ask the question, what can I do to help my student? A very important key in this is to first ask the student what helps them in the classroom, where they prefer to sit, if they like access to notes that you're going to give so they can keep up with what's going on and not get lost in that attempt to do two things at the same time, such as listening and taking notes, which can be extremely difficult for kids with hearing loss. Also, if your district has a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, contact them. This is their area of specialty, and they'll be able to give you insights on what works for that student. If you don't have a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, you can contact the KSD Outreach Consultant in your area. They'll be more than happy to come out and help assist you in this as well. And if you have an FM system, use it. This is so very important for our students. Keep it in mind, this helps them get access to instruction, which is the key to academic success. If you want to help the student in your classroom, providing visual cues are wonderful. Most of our kids with hearing loss are heavily reliant on visual cues to help them understand what's going on. So do this and it will usually help your student greatly. If you have lots of notes for them to copy, use the smart board or other technology to let them see them. Or go low tech and give away a copy of the notes. Remember, it's difficult for them to copy and watch you at the same time. And that's what kids with hearing losses struggle with in classrooms. We discussed earlier in the presentation about difficulty learning new vocabulary. So a wonderful thing to do with kids with hearing loss is to pre-teach them new vocabulary. If I understand what you're talking about before we get into details, then I'm going to have a better chance of understanding and grasping the information you're presenting. And you should ask them frequently, did they understand what you said? But please avoid using yes or no questions because they can fake answers yes or no really easily. But if they're required to tell you back what they said, then you're going to understand if they truly heard what you wanted them to hear. One final thought to keep in mind, that students with hearing losses are kids first who just happen to have a hearing loss. So think of them that way. And I'm sure things will work out just as you need them to.